science and campus as an assistant professor in the electrical and electronics engineering department he has re received his phd from triple e department of bits pilani in the area of oxide based thin film transistors during his phd he worked close csir series pilani and fabricated a metal insulator semiconductor structure to determine the performance of zno based thin film transistor tfts his research interests include thin film deposition characterization and semiconductor devices topological insulators device to circuit integrated designs with applications ranging from display electronics biosensors and photo detectors apart from his interest in semiconductor devices he also possesses a strong analog digital circuit design and layout design skills for the two successive years 2017 and 2018 he has successfully guided the team of undergraduates and postgraduate students from bits pilani and one cadence india design contest so i welcome you sir uh, 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 kavind kanbal sir dr kavind kanbal sir so uh, over to you sir okay uh, thank you very much uh, yeah, yeah. nikam if yeah, i yeah. pronounce yeah. your name Yeah. thank you very much thank you uh, very much uh, to the organizers uh, organizers uh, here uh, dr suman kumar mitra and their team and the uh, entire team of sbu so here today um, as the as a part of this fdp program i will be focusing on tft uh, theory and modeling and uh, i would also highlight the application part let's say you you know uh, you you can let's say you have a capability of either fabricating a tft or modeling a tft can you take it to circuit level and um, can you really think of making a display driver circuitry and other things so i will be giving a kind of more kind of overview so i will try to keep the discussion general uh, degree of technicality will be there but uh, will try to engage in such a way that even if you don't have a very strong background of modeling or something you should not be uh, bothered much okay so uh, can i start sure sir okay so i will be sharing my screen so hope my presentation is visible yes sir yeah so again thanking the organization organizer of this um, fdp program and uh, and in the theme of simulation modeling and application of advanced semiconductor devices i kavind kanfal from triple it allahabad will be presenting a talk on thin film transistors theory and modeling as been uh, highlighted by Uh, one of the uh, moderator of the session that since i work primarily in the area of oxide thin film transistors so most of the time i will be basically concentrating on inorganic thin film transistors because you might be aware now uh, it's equally like organic as well as inorganic thin film transistors are getting popular but again i will be telling you what are the advantage of specifically the oxide thin film transistors over the conventional amorphous silicon or organic thin film transistors okay but before that i will be telling you what it is all about what do we mean by the thin film transistors are the same as the normal silicon based mosfet or is there any difference what we can expect from a thin film transistors shall i expect something comparable with the finfet shall i expect something very comparable with the transistors or is the or are the expectations different from the thin film transistors right so what are the applications where it exactly fits and uh, what are the current research area in the thin film transistors the challenges and um, what could be the best way of uh, uh, finding a solution so all these things will be discussed in this particular talk and i'm telling you this is one of the very exciting and many one of the very driving uh, force in the current consumer market right so before i really begin i just give you a bit um, brief all of us basically uses the computers like we have 
uh, mostly like uh, LCD or LED screens in our home household, right? And uh, similarly, you also have uh, the mobile phones, which has a screen with uh, maybe the uh, portion which is visible to you is basically uh, a glass glass screen, which uh, mostly is conning glass. You will find it out the protection from the using the conning glass or something, right? So it has a MAMS based touch pad. You all know that once you have a capacitive touch kind of thing. Also, it it is a it is a basically screen. Right. For example, if you look, notice the Samsung phone, uh, then it is um, they basically say or OLED screen that is organic LED screen. And you know that LEDs are some something which don't illuminate by itself. You need to provide some current. Right. You need to drive a LED in order to illuminate the current. Maybe the pattern you can have RGB and the different different proportion of the RGB can be matched in such a way that you can basically generate a kind of color. Right. So. Who basically provide the current to the LED? Usually, it is not only uh, providing the current to the particular LED pixel, or maybe I would say I, I will be using the pixel word mostly rather than LED. It is not simply basically uh, controlling uh, how much amount of current it needs, the particular pixel needs, or which per particular pixel need to be turned on or turned off, right? So technically, there are two parts. One is basically you need to drive LED, so you need a driving, uh, dr you need something which can drive the uh, light emitting diode, and the second you need to also control the pixel, like um, which pixel, particular pixel to be turned on, to be turned off. Coming to that, uh, in, uh, most of the time, if you might have recall, the LCD screens were here uh, with us maybe from last four decades. And uh, if, but you might be knowing that in our uh, like our school days, uh, it was a luxury to have a CRT screen, cathode ray tube screen, because up to 2002 or 2003, when the LED screens really did not came to the market, it was only LCD. But LCD they do suffer from the viewing angle. You can, if you are looking at from let's say uh, different uh, angle uh, to the towards the screen, you might find the blurred picture. But the CRT was not having that particular problem. But the CRT was a kind of power hungry and bulky devices. If you might recall, after 2003 or 2004, you might have seen there has been a drastic uh, change in in the entire display industry. There has been the LED TVs, and LED TV has really changed the market considerably. We now most of the people basically they prefer the OLED TVs, organic LED TVs. Now there is a concept like Samsung, and there are certain companies they are basically going one step ahead with the micro OLED. With they, they are defining, see, they are defining new new terms and coming with. Um, a new technology in order to uh, show you a deeper uh, and deeper deeper images i would say more sd images okay they are going with higher frame per second rates and everything now a screen part is okay oled part is okay there are the manufacturer which can basically uh, take a uh, flexible seat or maybe the glass seat and will print the oled array which you want because oled you know it's the organic part and most of the time you can spin coat the films and you can design the whole transport layer electron transport layer you can make a combination and you make the oled array but it is as i said the backbone of all these advancement has been the thin film transistors that is that is why uh, if um, you might be, let's say, you might have bought the iPhone, uh, iPhone six or seven. You might have seen if you really go to the specification, it says LTPS. Uh, LTPS stands for Low Temperature Polysilicon TFT based screen. So they basically use a bit driving. Uh, as I said, that LED does not doesn't emit by itself, so it needs something which can drive it. So these are the thin film transistor at the backbone. Okay, so these thin film transistor basically drive individual pixels and basically also control its switching activity, whether when to turn on, when to turn off. Now, coming to it, why do we need a thin film transistor there? Why can't we have a MOSFET there? Because MOSFET can be also very efficient, right? And most probably, probably it's uh, the scaling ability of the MOSFET has been really good, right? But the problem is that the cost associated with the MOSFET, if you might recall, a MOSFET basically needs um, a single crystal silicon to start with and getting the single crystal start with is really costly. So here comes that you don't really put uh, this, uh, uh, the requirement when you basically do it, uh, when you basically need to drive the display 
you don't need a very highly sophisticated transistor with high mobility with very good control on vt you don't really need it uh, very sophisticated transistor you just want to make sure that um, these gadgets looks very good okay very good and this this should be performing their required required function and fortunately uh, instead of starting with the single crystal silicon at the very early in 90s and 80s we used to have amorphous silicon means instead of growing the silicon from jokralski or something you basically deposit the silicon and the nature of the silicon film will, will, will be either amorphous or polycrystalline so you don't need a single crystal silicon what will be the drawback you all know that if you are basically talking about a uh disordered semiconductors i would say uh, thin film transistors are basically one of the best applications from the disordered semiconductors disordered semiconductor means so far whatever the uh, uh whatever the we learn it in conventional electronics course in our uh, from the streetman banerji or muller and other books they mostly emphasize with the single crystal silicon based applications but if you really look with the cheaper applications like amorphous silicon based application poly silicon based application because their deposition cost will be very less because you are not starting from the single crystal these are the one of the interesting applications but what will be if i compare tft here mosfet here what would be basically the difference between a thin film transistor and mosfet is basically in tft though still the still the channel if let's say i'm technically comparing a tft with a mosfet and the tft is amorphous silicon and the mosfet is basically simple single crystal silicon the first major difference will come uh, structure wise principle wise they they look more or less same means you will have a source strain you will have a channel between them you will have a gate oxide means entire uh, they will be uh, they will be similar as to fat the field effect transistors but in terms of their uh, expectations they will be different because once you are depositing a amorphous silicon or polycrystalline silicon their mo their mobility will be hardly in the range of like uh, 1 cm square per volt second to let's say 20 cm square per volt second but when you are talking about the mosfet and based upon the single crystal silicon in no modern days you can get up to 200 cm square per volt second right or maybe 50 to 200 based upon how much electrostatic field is there right so this is the fundamental idea of the tft tft uh, uh, tfts are mostly driving the display market and uh, in display market you better you uh, you need uh, the transistor which could be cheaply made and can be made in any kind of substrate if you can fabricate a transistor on on a glass substrate you will be better like you just need a mechanical support and you can get it from the glass substrate why why to have only the glass substrate why don't we basically go with the flexible if you might see uh, there has been lots of report in the flexible thin film transistors as well right uh flexible uh, electronics where you basically fabricate a fabricate a design or transistors on on a flexible substrate like pan pad anyway all these interesting things we will discuss so i am basically first explaining you the outline so outline is very simple i will start with the simple transistors we will talk about how the tft technology really progressed over the years we will talk about what are the challenges because the challenges also gives us the research gaps what we can do and what are the key uh, key things to be addressed whenever you basically talk about the simple transistors in terms of dois models i will be telling you two classical approaches one is the modular modeling approaches which uh, one approach really originates from the paper given by the cito very classical paper somewhere in 1980s or 70s about the polycrystalline semiconductor so their extension uh, how exactly you basically model the polycrystalline semiconductor which is basically used as a channel layer in the in a in a thin film transistors we will also talk about uh, the threshold voltage model you may ask why basically we are talking about threshold voltage model because these are basically well established but let me tell you uh, the thin film transistor primarily the oxide based thin film transistor they are not inversion mode devices they are equipotential mode devices i will be telling you all these things in detail we'll talk about the mobility model uh, for polycrystalline jadano tft and this part is very really very important if uh, you really want to make uh, the display driver circuitry or in pixel imagers then device circuit integration and adapted spice models will be a key we will talk about some of the recent work which, which our group has done we'll be uh, finishing with the acknowledgement and references so uh, i have turned on the full screen mode i cannot see the chat comments uh, i can i could see there was a chat message maybe so can uh, is, if uh, so wherever you want to ask something you please uh, interrupt me it's okay if you would like to interrupt me right so am i audible so far yes you okay. 
Okay. So coming to the basic structure, if you might see uh, the thin film, what are the basically the thin film transistors? You may check it here. Let me just see if my control over the cursor is happening properly here. So you see, in this thin film transistor, again, you have a drain, you have a source. It is a channel material. The choice of channel material based upon this uh, thin film transistor could be different. I told you it could be amorphous silicon, it could be the polycrystalline silicon, it could be oxide semiconductor, it could be organic semiconductor, okay? Organic semiconductor. So amorphous silicon and polycrystalline silicon were almost like you can say they were first generation TFTs. Oxide and organic semiconductors are basically nowadays uh, mostly in the demand and uh, you will find it out if you follow. There is a magazine which we call it Society for Information Display, SID. They, uh, they uh, regularly publish their share, share of the display electronics on uh, semiconductor industry. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, nowadays it is not the processor because uh, processor wage, uh, it, it is not the consumer see the processor. It is basically consumer sees few things when they purchase the electronic gadgets. They either see the display quality, what kind of the screen they are getting, what, whether their touch is really good or not. They really look for how the battery, uh, battery life, like uh, whether if your smartphone is basically getting, um, you need to charge it in every four hours, definitely you're not, you're not going to uh, follow it up. So the people are working in the battery part, they are working towards the display part, the screen part. So these are the key driver uh, force in nowadays in consumer electronics and electronic gadgets. Okay. Now coming to the gate dielectric. So here we have a gate. See, uh, you can see uh, just uh, uh, in, in case of MOSFET, our structure is mostly top gated, means you have, if I say about the MOSFET, you have a P type silicon, then you have an N source and drain, right? Then you have a gate oxide, and then you have a gate electrode here, gate. Similarly, you can define two, two contexts here. One is drain, maybe another is source, right? This is, and you basically define another context as a bulk. So the similar way, I am just uh, there is a. Uh, uh, I preferred here to put a bottom gate TFT topology. In bottom gate, you can clearly see this is the. You might have let's say a glass substrate. Glass means corning glass substrate. Okay. Then you can have the gate electrode pattern here. You can pattern a gate electrode here. Then there is a gate dielectric. The gate dielectric could be. SiO2. It could be a different Al2O3. Different different gate dielectric. I will be telling you. In terms of channel material, there are different different choices. You can have amorphous silicon, polyly silicon, oxide semiconductor, organic semiconductor, drain and source. Sometimes people make it. Uh, uh, sometimes they give simply metal contact here properly, simple metal contact. And uh, mostly nowadays, uh, indium tin oxide, which is also known as a transparent conductive oxide, indium tin oxide, is basically used here for drain and source. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead. The principle wise, they are same. You have to apply a uh, see. This is the electrode, gate electrode, which will be controlling the conductivity of this channel material. So the similar principle you have in the fat. Actually, these are the type of the fat only. But the only thing is that channel here, channel material here is basically not the single crystal silicon because you are not um, uh, getting. Uh, you are not going for the costly wafers. It basically, yeah, since you are depositing subtrain channel material, and once you deposit something, the possibility of it getting single crystalline is very very less. Mostly, the form will be amorphous or polycrystalline, right? Now, the fundamental use of the thin film transistors, as I said, if you really look, um, uh, thin film transistors are commonly used as a pixel addressing element in AM OLED, active matrix organic LED. So let's say this is your organic LED. You can see there is some uh, uh, data line here. There is a scan line. You can see this is a switching TFT. It will de decide whether this particular transistor T2 will be on or off. Okay. If this T1 is on, then only you will get valid voltage here. And that will basically, once uh, once you have the valid voltage here, uh, more than the threshold voltage of this driving TFT, this particular transistor will be on, turn on in the saturation region. And once this particular transistor turn on in the saturation region, this current I will be the similar to the MOSFET, uh, something like whatever the mobility you have, uh, your effect, field effect mobility uh, this uh, particular TFT has, COX, W by L, uh, W by 2L, VGS minus VT whole square or I can say um, V overdrive square, okay? I take the overdrive voltage as VGS minus VT, following the convention of the Rajavi, okay? So the same way, basically, this OLED needs the current in order to, uh, to basically emit 
right? And uh, so this T1 transistor is basically uh, controlling whether this OLED is supposed to be turned on or not turned off. And the T2 transistor is basically providing the I OLED current to the OLED transistor. And based upon the current to the OLED transistor, its brightness of this particular LED can be controlled. Okay, and the color of OLED, you you know that it is basically depends from the material to material. You can have the different color, different different colors for the OLED. Some of the demonstration which has not been from here, but I'm just telling you. For example, if you might see the very first picture, this is basically a flexible substrate. You can see this is a, uh, a plastic seed. In this plastic seed, there is a seven segment display. This seven segment display is basically again uh, being driven by the thin film transistor, and it is basically uh, driven by Jadano based thin film transistors. That is why it is transparent because you know that Jadano is basically a wide band gap semiconductor. Its EG is somewhere 3.4 electron volt. While if you see the silicon and uh, germanium, they have the EG less than 1.12 electron volts, so they are not transparent to visible spectrum. But Jadano is a transparent to visible spectrum, so you can achieve the transparency. Similarly, uh, similarly, uh, one more report by the Nomura um, uh, and Atia CL. You can find it out. They have deposited a complete array of the transparent film, flexible film, film transistor again in the flexible substrate. So coming to as I said in the TFT, we have a various choices. Amorphous silicon is one, but it is not transparent. Polycrystal silicon not transparent, but in terms of oxide semiconductor, you will get the transparency. Okay, and. Uh, that is the future. If you really, uh, if you might have read a report in Nikkei Asia, is one of the very good magazine from the Japan. They projected that maybe in somewhere in 2050s to 2070s, you will find it out. In 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 fact, your entire integrated chips could be totally transparent. If they are changing the though its chances are less because they are not very uh, as good as the MOSFET. But you can have you can think of realizing a totally transparent system. And um, which involves the, all the ICs, which involves the displays and everything. You can have a totally transparent gadget, uh, a working gadget, which you can have. Uh, some demonstrations are already been made. Uh, one group from the IMAC, I forget the name of the person. Their group has demonstrated already uh, entire microprocessor on a flexible substrate. So all these things basically you can make from the ThinkTrim transistors. Coming to the coming to its figure of merit or I would say performance parameters, uh, the uh, most of the time, if you really compare the thin film transistors, what are the parameters you really look? One is basically on to off ratio. It is very important, okay. And uh, biggest problem in the TF thin film transistor is basically off current. You basically want this off current to be less because, as I said, if you really go to the oxide thin film transistor. It, uh, in accumulation mode devices, the, usually the off current is supposed to be more, but uh, fortunately for Jadano based thin film transistor, you might see that the off current magnitude is less. So you need a very good high off to on ratio. You need the threshold voltage. Usually, uh, you might see uh, the previous generation thin film transistors based uh, displays, they might be needing 20 volt to operate, 20 volt VDD to operate, right? But nowadays, if you might see the today's display to, 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 uh, uh, drivers, you might see the five volt or even less than five volt is basically being applied. Okay, so twenty volt uh, VDD, you might be thinking about a VDD of twelve volt or something. But this VDD, this threshold voltage is very high, right? I will be telling you these were the fundamental problems with the early days thin film transistor. They used to have a very high threshold voltage. Subthreshold slope is one of the part. You know that since it is again made from the conventional electronics, there is nothing like that. We are doing band-to-band -band tunneling or any any kind of like uh, tunnel fed kind of action. So you know the best slope you could get at the room temperature is 60 millivolt per decade. Okay, but but in thin film transistor, most of the time you will find it out. The uh, the uh, subthreshold slope is between 90 millivolt per decade to sometimes one volt per decade, based upon how you have made it. Okay, some of the reports you might see they have very bad substitute slope like one volt per decade, and definitely these are you, you are not going to like uh, with a very high uh, switching uh, VDD you might use it, but with not uh, not with a very small VDD you can use it. In terms of mobility, mobility the parameter is mostly extracted, and the uh, mobility extraction I think you know how to extract the mobility from the current. And you can define um, if you have the IDVG curve, IDVG curve, and IDVDS curve, IDVDS curve, 
IDVDS. You can basically plot IDVDS and IDVG, all these kind of mobility like effective mobility, field effect mobility, saturation mobility, all these parameters can be step specified. As the name says, the successor slope is basically is the inverse of uh, your, um, your ID versus VG curve where the ID is plotted in the logarithmic scale. Okay, and so I would say it's the successor swings and uh, successor slope always an inverse comes in your mind, though people say it is a successor slope, but inverse is always associated. That is why this is here. You know that successor slope could be as good as 60 millivolt per decade as it happens in the very best of the MOSFET, means uh, with a bulk charge factor almost unity right so i would be saying um, these are the um, performance parameter you will be having for this particular thin film transistors reach all these things okay so means you need a high on to op ratio you uh, technically need low threshold voltage so that you can have low operating voltages like vdd and everything you need a very less value of the successor slope close to 60 millivolt per decade the mobility is supposed to be high. This is unit because if you have higher mobility, then the OLED current will be high. The current going to the OLED will be high, so you can have better brightness. And mobility is the major challenge when because you are making thin film transistor out of <coughs> amorphous silicon and polycrystalline silicon. So far, everything is clear. You're able to follow it up. Participant. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now coming to the transfer characteristic, uh, just showing you the transfer characteristic. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So you know that uh, IDVG curve of a typical transistor, basically, you find it out like this: square relationship IDVG. Okay. And uh, sometimes when when the students basically work with the spice level one equation. The spice level one equation. They tend to forget that below cutoff. This they believe that below cutoff region the current is zero. But you know that below cutoff the current is not zero in most of the devices in all, almost all kind of devices. So when you plot ln id versus vg, this is the curve you will get, right? So this is up to vt. You can see the current is basically varying quadratically in logarithmic scale. This is how it looks like. And while below vt, you can see there is um, this particular region current is basically linear. So it means that current has been an exponential function as if uh, you have the current through the diode uh, governed by the software equation and in linear in logarithmic scale it is going to be linear and this particular portion basically decide the substitute slope ss basically it tells you for a decade change in current let's say you are changing the current from uh, here to here uh, here to here how much vgs you need in order to change this current from here to here that is the that is how you define the successor slope millivolt per decade and similarly similarly uh, you define the off current off current is basically current off current is the current at uh, zero vgs you can see if you have zero vgs and you have applied vgs equal to vdd that is uh, sorry this is vds equal to vdd at vds equal to vdd you basically find it out your off current okay so this is somewhere uh, somewhere here when your gate to source voltage is zero volt what is your off current that basically gives you a measure of standby power consumption of your display the standby power consumption means uh, let's say your display is not on you are not uh, using a mobile phone the still how much power it is consuming will be decided by the off current uh, you can simply multiply number of tfts let's say or n multiply by vdd multiply by id you can find out a measure of the standby power consumption. The similar way you do for the in the digital IC design to measure the leakage power consumption in a CMOS, in a CMOS based uh, ICs. Coming to the major evolution for the thin film transistor, this these are this is the basically timeline. You can see uh, somewhere in 1930. All thing, all these things, because thin film transistor are nothing but a part, uh, something like a field effect transistor only. So the firstly, the concept was proposed by Lenin Field in his patent. He proposed the concept of field effect transistors, where he took a semiconductor and took an aluminum foil, and he could figure it out when he was applying a, a gate voltage at aluminum foil. He could figure it out the conductivity of this underneath uh, semiconductor was changing, and he was also surprised that this uh, particular electrode is not connected anywhere but still it is changing the conductivity of this particular film so he could figure it out that a third terminal is basically controlling the uh, the conductivity or the resistivity of this particular film so that particular concept was the, given by the linfield 
though the idea was somewhere in 1930s but still for a very long part um, due to the uh, unavailability of the sophisticated components and uh, there is uh, and uh, machinery you can see and everything uh, a lot lot something really happened and you might have all these things might have been discussed in your first lectures as well uh, the fat couldn't have been realized very first they came after the bjt so ic planar tft was introduced in 1958 and somewhere in 1960 the mosfet really came in picture and that was the time when the first tft using a compound semiconductor cds cds okay having a mobility almost 40 cm square per volt second was demonstrated was thin pin transistor but that was the time where uh, people were really going for the miniaturization planarization and everything slowly slowly the focus really changed Fo focus really changed to germanium then it came to silicon and these uh, thin pin transistor and uh, their focus the focus was not that much there but still there has been certain research like uh, uh, in 1964 you can see uh, there was first tft being proposed using tin oxide um again this is oxide semiconductor sno2 using uh, sno2 in 1968 again it was the, the bosen and jacobs they proposed the first tft based upon jadanov uh, and for a very long time you could feel that um, uh, it was not uh, they, they were out of like uh, they were not being researched much because that was the time where uh, ic industry integrated chip industry was evolving okay similarly you can see the tfts and i would say in 1979 it was the first amorphous silicon hydrogenated silicon means this it is amorphous silicon but most of the time it is passivated with the um, uh, hydrogen so we call it amorphous uh, hydrogenated silicon tfts it was basically uh, somewhere in 1979 79 they came in 1980s it was polysilicon tfts in 1989 first uh, 10 10.4 inch commercial lcd this was displaced using the polysilicon tfts and here in 1990s uh, the concept of organic tft came they started using the organic semiconductor to realize the thin film transistors and somewhere here in 2003 it was the first uh, first report where uh, people reported a totally transparent uh, a very i would not say totally it was almost 75% transparent general thin film transistors in somewhere in 2003 so this is a basically somewhere up to 2003 i am basically divided the timeline such a way that up to this particular point the crt screen used to dominate latest i am not targeting some other tft because i said that i will be focusing mostly on the oxide and specifically in the jadano because when i make the some comment on the jadano based thin film transistor the same comments will be also applicable with other oxide semiconductor right so somewhere as i said in 2003 it was the first report for the thin film transistors later on you can see there has been lots of improvement in terms of the mobility time factor on determining the thin film transistor performance if you you uh, you started with somewhere mobility of 2 to 10 to the square per volt second recently i was reading certain article they have reported up to 360 cm square per volt second of the indium ig jado tfts right and similarly there is also some other composite they have uh, uh, they have seen that this is the oxynitride jdano1 based tfts they have also uh, promised a very high mobility anyway you can see this is how it has been uh, progressing there has been 2006 uh, from the ssk park they have demonstrated in am oled panel and they have driven it by the jdano tft recently Uh, and now the oxide tft has been a very common common part of the display electronics they have been basically used and uh, they are considered a kind of future because uh, contemporary you can see there are oxide semiconductor there are organic semiconductor but uh, when you compare uh, uh, oxide semiconductor with organic you will find it out oxide semiconductor possesses better mobility compared to organic semiconductor organic organic semiconductor so that gives them as as why i am saying that they, they, they uh, this give them as because nowadays we are not uh, basically in the era of vga display right we are basically going for the hd display and there has been news like um, uh, there has been uh, tvs like 4k hd and everything you need high 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 frame per second rate high frame per second rate if the conventional frame per second rate is 30 frame per second you need up to 240 frame per second so frame per second if you are basically you need then you need a very high carrier mobility in order to accommodate all these things right so well i will focus on why jadano based tft or i can say oxide based tft the it is basically again studied uh, most studied material in the last uh, decade it is wine band gap semiconductor 
and uh, uh, one thing which I am telling you, the thin film transistor you are making over a glass substrate or you are making over a pan or pad substrate. So if you are making something over a flexible substrate or a glass substrate, you cannot deposit those things at very high temperature. For example, if you might you might see our thermal budget of condenser silicon based electronics, you go up to 14, 17 degree, you basically melt the silicon and everything when you basically do it. Or maybe the oxidation process go up to 1000 degrees centigrade. You can, these substrate materials cannot sustain that much amount of temperature. So you need to basically uh, find a way of depositing these materials, uh, ZNO, be it ZNO, be it organic semiconductor, everything, on at room temperature. If you are able to do deposit it at room temperature, you will find it out its quality and everything will be very much improved. Okay. Another thing which goes very positively with the uh, ZNO based thin film transistor is basically they are transparent because their band gap is 3.4 electron volt, which makes them transparent. Okay, and you can have you can have a transparent uh, you can have ITO based gate. Let's say this is an indium tin oxide ITO based gate electrode. You have uh, uh, you can have let's let me make a structure somewhere here. Let's say you have a glass substrate. You can basically coat it with the ITO. This is the ITO. ITO is again transparent. Then you can have a gate dielectric. Dielectrics dielectric materials are again you can make. Dielectric materials, the band gap is also um, you will find it it's high, so they they are they could be transparent. So here you can have a kind of jadano which is transparent. Again, you can have a source and drain kind of a structure, and you need a mechanical support, or maybe you can have the dielectric here. So you can find it out that this entire structure could be made highly transparent. So that is a, one of the key aspects of the consumer market that if you are getting making gadgets which are transparent, uh, chances of marketability is even more. They have a high mobility compared to amorphous the existing amorphous hydrogenated silicon and organic thin film transistors. And they do support the large area deposition because you can have the technique like RF spectring and um, RF spectring is some of the most of the time used uh, technique for to, to deposit uh, in a very big glass uh, in very big glass seat you can basically deposit this um, using the RF spectrum you can deposit the jadano. So they support the large area deposition or sometimes this particular area of the display is also goes with the name uh, large area electronics because here you can see uh, you need an entire screen and the screen could be very large and you need the run, run you don't really add it up you basically have the large substrate and you deposit whatever you want the, uh, the organic LED, the TFTs and everything make the circuitry and everything it can be used for, as a driving circuitry for OLED display so all these things make it uh, very promising I would say if you ask me point wise when you can say they support a better mobility compared to the existing uh, Amorphous silicon hydrogenated based TFTs or organic TFTs. They basically possess, uh, since because of their intrinsic band gap, you will find it out they are transparent, right? And definitely the, you can deposit all these um, Jadano based TFT at room temperature. You can make the TFT at room temperature. That basically enables any kind of substrate. Means you can use a pan substrate, pack substrate, which are plastic substrate. You can also work it at the glass substrate, right? Now, let, uh, the, here comes interesting thought. Like you might know that when it was basically a conventional transistor, conventional transistor, it took long effort in order to optimize silicon with the gate dielectric, and the uh, the and slowly researchers found that it is this SiO2, which is the native oxide of the silicon, can be made uh, very very much defect free at the interface. You know, the whenever you talk about a thin film transistor or flat base XN, it is the interface between gate dielectric and underlying channel layer it is very critical if it is not well it well defined if there are lots of traps uh, uh, energy dependent traps then what may happen is basically it may result in the solar voltage instability or it may happen that the you are applying a gate uh, gate voltage maybe the field lines are terminating at the interface itself not going towards the channel right so uh, it may it may you may you may want to make a thin film transistor or MOSFET but you may find it out due to the interface defects and everything it is not behaving at all right so the interface is very much crucial when it comes to silicon based tra tra transistors you know that SiO2 is supposed to be a very native oxide hence this performance was good but when it comes to zinc oxide general based TFTs 
there are a number of the gate dialectic available there is it's nothing like uh, it's the interface is already been optimized so when you basically develop a technology uh, you need to first start with the making uh, studying it from its interface you can always inter do the inter interface study by using uh, by making a metal insulator semiconductor stack you can always make a metal insulator semiconductor uh, stacks you can characterize them using this cv characteristic jv characteristic you can find out the dit interface state density right uh, from the Nicolian um, uh, uh, analysis, you can have the GP by omega curve. Okay, you can also find out DIT from doing the CB measurement at low frequency at and high frequency. So all these things is are very important. So the the key challenge which has been in case of performance of Jelenovic TFT, it has been the gate dielectric. So when you when you basically choose the gate dielectric, there are funda some fundamental properties which you need to keep in mind. First, it should have a high enough dielectric constant. If it is having high enough dielectric constant, one thing is basically the VT will bring down, the solar voltage will be bring, bring down, and your 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 TFT will be the low power TFT. It will be it can be low power TFT because your supply voltage itself also scale down, right? And also it can support the number reasonable number of year of scaling. If you want to scale it, let's say. Uh, slowly, slowly, you know that uh, now the micro OLED are coming in picture and let's say you want to scale it up like uh, their size and everything, then a high K dielectric always support it. It gives you that margin. The second point is basically whenever you are making a metal insulating semiconductor structure, you have a gate electrode, gate, you have a semiconductor which could be let's say Jadano, you have, uh, or I would say first gate, then you have a, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, high K dielectric Jadaro 2, you have a Jadano. You want to make this particular step uh, like gate, zirconium, this uh, zirconium oxide, Jadano. You want to make this particular step, then you also need that there should not be any leakage, leakage from gate to Jadano or Jadano to gate. So you must ensure that there should be a very good band offset with Jadano over one electron volt from both conduction band and valence band. Okay. Then in terms of definitely when you go with the higher band gap, you will get if higher band gap basically results in higher dielectric strength and uh, that will basically, uh, that's, that is basically advisable whenever you select a high K dielectric. Now the interface with Jadano uh, was that whatever oxide you have, whatever oxide you have, oxide based channel you have, it should make a proper proper interface with the with the gate oxide if you are making a paper a proper interface with the gate oxide which is thermodynamically stable there is less bum bumpy morphology at the interface you are minimizing the traps and if, if possible the people basically whenever they are making the interface they are also passivating the defects at the interface by different different annealing technique by different different doping techniques they are basically passivating the defects interface defects it is very important in order to get the stable performance and again thing it should not whenever you are making the interfaces a layer by layer deposition it should not result in the strain if it is resulting in some sort of a strain be it compressive or tensile again you will have the defects and the defects will result again the shift uh, thistle voltage shift and everything so all these are the key points right so what i'm trying to say you can clearly see this is your channel this is your channel this is your gate dielectric and this is the interface which is supposed to be very crucial you need a fine amount of uh, conduction band margin also you can have the valence band margin but mostly you will find it out these semiconductors that are no base semiconductor and any oxide semiconductor are mostly n type n type they are mostly n type nature because of their intrinsic defect oxygen vacancies they basically turns turns to be n type so mostly this margin delta ec is more important it should have a very high EG. It should have a good value of the K. But these things are basically reciprocally related. If you find out, if you go with high dielectric constant, you will find it out. You are going with the, the, the EG is getting less. If you are going for low dielectric constant, the EG is getting more. So they are basically reciprocally related. So there is a trade-off between dielectric constant and the band gap. And similarly, uh, anyway, delta EC, delta EV to totally depends upon the band alignment. Once you make the their um, uh, band alignment at the equilibrium, you can basically see what is the delta EC, what is the delta EV. Okay, so all are these things. I have just noted down certain certain promising, uh, certain um, uh, certain dielectric material which has been uh, been reported with zinc oxide based thin like uh, base semiconductor. So these are some of the reported dielectric material. You can see, for example. And there are few 
uh, for example you can see there are certain um, like you can see this vatio3 is having a very uh, less eg but it is having a very high high dielectric constant but it is giving you a very poor conduction uh, delta ec means uh, it is going to be le always leaky so you need to if when if let's say you are thinking of using vatio3 or bst maybe bst uh, with the jadeno they may result in very low value of vt and everything but you will identify that uh, they don't have margin in um, in terms of band offset so you may need a thicker gate oxide and everything so they don't they don't give you any advantage okay so this is the comparative sum summary and similarly you can also check their thermal expansion coefficient because that basically tells you what is the stress because but this parameter is not that matters because most of the time if you are trying the reposition at room temperature this is not coming in picture but if it is you are trying the reposition up to 500 degree centigrade or less than 500 degree centigrade uh, most of the time you will find out some of the substrate will be able to sustain this particular temperature then uh, their thermal uh, TEC will also come in picture that underlying what is the what is the TEC of underlying layer and what is the TEC of the depository layer. If they are having a mismatch, once you cool it down, then they, there is possibility of the defects, and you will not prefer it. So uh, sometimes you can always define a kind of figure of merit in terms of let's say you want to make a low leakage low leakage TFT. And definitely, you want to go with the good value of the threshold voltage. If you are going for uh, less value of VT, you need to prefer high dielectric constant. So you should be going somewhere here. This give you this give you the value of uh, less VT. If you go along, if you increase the VT, if you increase the dielectric constant, the VT is less. Okay. And similarly, if you look at this particular parameter, which I have defined as a figure of merit, this involves the effective uh, tunneling mass. And here you have a. Uh, uh, conduction band offset, dielectric constant. If you see this particular parameter can be treated as FOM, FOM, figure of merit. If this particular parameter is basically more, the leakage, gate leakage current is going to be less. So that way you can finalize three or four material and uh, later, because you have a sets of materials available for gate dielectric. You need to first, before you really go with the interface study, Definitely, this doesn't. This table doesn't really reveal any information about the interface defects, which could be there once you make the interface. Because all these things are basically all these things are you can find it out from the theoretical approaches, right? So here, um, uh, so uh, after finding out some certain uh, certain high K dialectic, you can find it out. You can basically make the MIS structure with all of these uh, dialectics. You try to perceive the interface defects and see. Which is giving you the CV very least hysteresis, CV hysteresis, which is basically um, giving you constant value of VT even in at prolonged gate bias and everything. You can check their interface stability and everything, and then you can decide which one, which dielectric material you can uh, take with you while you make make the thin film transistor. The second challenge after the selection of gate dielectric material itself is a challenge because your and the the targeted specification is basically low VT and stable uh, thistle voltage. Thistle voltage means stable interface, a very good interface. Means least defect. You should have a least defect at the interface at the channel itself because channel itself is polycrystalline. The polycrystalline channel will have the grain boundary. Grain boundary will have. Um, centers which will basically capture the electrons and uh, if, you, if they capture the electron the some portion will get uh, surrounding portion will get depleted right so there will be barrier potential barriers and that can basically change because everything is happening at the interface so that can possibly again uh, result in unstable the threshold voltage threshold voltage instability right so these are the two points basically you basically look for when you basically do the gate dielectric material selection and in terms of leakage, leakage can be easily understood, uh, easily managed because uh, so far, if you re if I really go with the leakage, I would say that leakage is not a primary issue in the thin film transistor so far because uh, you you are you know, if you really read the reports, still people are working with the one micrometer to ten micrometer channel length in the thin film transistor. They are not going within the nanometers now. They are still working with the one micrometer and ten micrometer channel length, right? So you can always accommodate a thicker gate oxide. If you are accommodating thicker thicker gate oxide, you can have a very strong leakage performance. So leakage is not a very, but it is the VT and the stable thistle voltage which should be need to be addressed. Now the second challenge, as I said, it always comes is the low electron mobility. When you talk about the single crystal silicon, 
do we uh, you might see uh, the when you do the, the questions in your um, btech second year somewhere you might have seen uh, electron mobility is somewhere about 40 and 80 centimeters square per volt second that is a very high mobility but when you talk about the fet because of this vertical field which because of the vertical gate field you might have seen this mobility is basically reduced to 100 to 200 centimeters square per volt second still these numbers are very high very high but when you talk about the amorphous silicon or amorphous semiconductor or polycrystalline semiconductor polycrystalline semiconductor you will find it out our more for silicon semiconductor again will have a very less mobility maybe one centimeter square to 20 centimeter square volt second polycrystalline silicon this is one of the same image i'm showing here of the deposited um 50 almost i think 100 nanometer thick jadano film you can see uh, there is there are certain grain kind of structure there are some circles then you have this one this one this one so these are the grains these are the grains and these are the grain boundary gb grain boundary okay so this is basically something like you are driving in a highway uh, the single crystal silicon is basically somewhere you are driving a highway let's say in yamuna express you are not stopping anywhere you are going very smoothly but again this is something like you are driving somewhere in let's say in some of the very congested road maybe in banaras or somewhere or maybe even in fact Allahabad, lots of the area you will find it out you cannot really go because every time you have to use the brake 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 and everything right so so your fund up your technically whenever you have such kind of roads it's not really important that you overtake someone because you know that technically the time you will be reaching to your destination will be on an average the same whatever the effort you do you have to stop somewhere right the same is with the polycrystalline semiconductor you have the grains and grain boundaries i would say let's say this is my one grain and this is my grain boundary this is the grain right grains are basically similar to similar to single crystal silicon you may get a very good mobility let's say grains are having a mobility equal to 200 centimeters square per volt second but grain boundary are basically centers where uh, where you will find it out uh, nearby the, if you, it, this has the electron this has the electron this has the electron these electrons will be uh, captured in that the green boundary and hence there will be a potential barrier in the energy band diagram you will find out there will be potential barrier in if i look at the ec part right because if they are taking the electrons so there is a depletion there is a barrier there is a barrier here there is a barrier here so these gain boundary will have a very less mobility maybe 0 0.5 or 0 point or maybe one centimeter square per volt second right and this is your channel means your your current is basically uh, i have just shown you here one grain grain boundary and another gain but if you visualize a channel if a tft is basically channel length is 10 micrometer okay so let's say 100 nanometer is the size of the gain grain then you have a grain boundary then you have a grain then you have a grain boundary then you have a grain idealistic picture you know that grains will have the random orientation and everything these are the gbs these are the gbs so you will encounter multiple grains so these are the grains these are the grain boundaries gbs grains are having giving you mobility up to let's say very good 200 centimeter square per volt second Green boundary is giving you one centimeter square per volt second. So what will be their effective mobility? Anyone can tell what will be the effective mobility when you are traversing from here to here? You know that uh, the mobilities are harmonic mean, right? When when someone asks you to find out the effective mobility, conduction mobility, what you do? Mobility is basically mobility of the grain and mobility of the green boundary. So what happens if you take the harmonic mean, the lower term dominates or the higher term dominates? If you're taking harmonic mean of two things and let's say you have one number is 200 another is one what will be the air effective towards one or towards 200 towards one sir towards one right so that is what kills the mobility mobility right so whenever you have a polycrystalline semiconductor it is very expected that its uh, on mobility is basically being restricted due to these grain boundaries and these grain boundaries basically really hampers and most of the time you might find out the articles and in thin film transistor they say no to grain boundaries they say it's better to go with the amorphous rather than be going to the polycrystalline silicon okay because polycrystalline silicon will uh, generate a grain boundary there will be grain boundary there will be potential barrier and these potential barrier are also coming at the interfaces at just near to very interface because you have a you have gate dielectric here you have a channel here so these gain boundary also also 
to test with this interface. So there is a potential barrier. If you have some potential barrier at the interface, and the nature of potential barrier is basically voltage dependent, means based upon. So you know that it will also randomly change your VTL, right? So these. People don't really prefer the polycrystalline material. Anyway, we are not going today there. We will be discussing about uh, theory and modeling. So I hope you are clear that this is another challenge when we talk about thin print transistors. But but this is the challenge which we have taken because we wanted to have a transistor which could be cheaper than silicon based TFT because we don't we don't want to make our skin unnecessarily expensive we want that our skin could if it's really great if our skin could be transparent if it's really great if you can print everything on plastic substrate all the tft structure and everything you can have the flexibility and everything these things we desired right so interestingly you know that when you basically targeting uh, something on flexible substrate something on uh, glass substrate or tft is a uh, transistor on a glass substrate definitely you have to compromise somewhere and it is the electron mobility actually so well, I would say this is uh, this is a challenge, but at the same time, this is what we have desired. So it is a basically, I would say, the thin film transistor results in interesting applications of disordered semiconductor, cheaper uh, semiconductor. Only. Okay, but again, though we might have desired that we wanted to have a cheaper transistor, but again, in order to improve the performance, whenever someone asks you to make a thin film transistor, definitely from one step to another step, you do the experimentation. You would like to enhance the mobility, the field effect mobility. Electrical instability, as I said, it is not basically, um, I told you basically when you talk about a channel, you have basically, let's say, gate dielectric here, gate dielectric. It could be any gate dielectric of your choice. And this is a semiconductor. This is the semiconductor, let's say, I don't know, right? I told you, definitely, when we talk about the electrical instability, major contributor could be first the interface is the major contributor. If the interface is not defect free, you will find out there will be lots of traps. I have basically shown some of the voltage dependent traps. You can see this. This is the charge neutrality level here. So below the charge neutrality level, you can uh, treat all these traps as a donor like traps and above the charge neutrality, you may treat them acceptor like trap. Anyway, there will be some, well, these are the voltage dependent traps. There will be some, uh, as I said, Jadano itself, let's say this is itself is basically having polycrystal nature. So there will be green boundaries. And these green boundaries, if you really make their corresponding EC diagram, you will find out conduction band, you will find it out. There will be some potential barriers. Okay. They all are coming at the interface. So they are basically contributing to all the interface states, right? So interface states are basically contributed from all the voltage different uh, traps, what you have, whatever you have in the uh, polycrystalline mat semiconductor materials, right? More, more importantly, you also have some traps in uh, dielectric. Okay, so you can see uh, all these will basically contribute the electric and instability. Once you basically compute the VT, you will find it out when you are doing the forward sweep or backward sweep in CV, you might find out some sort of hysteresis, right? And this hysteresis basically tells you there is a basic, there is a basically some, some, not only the hysteresis, but you will also find out some disorder, some disorder, their shape might, that might have changed or something. So all these things you can find out from the experimentation as well, that uh, this has been a major challenge and electrical instability is something I would say, if you say from the start from the generation of the amorphous silicon TFTs to now, IG0 TFT, it has been there. It is there. VT safety is always there. With the prolonged bias and everything, you will find the VT changes. Either it will increase or decrease. But fortunately, at the circuit level, means once you basically make the circuit, we are able to sense this VT change. We are able to sense this VT change. And after sensing this VT change, we are able to devise certain topology which will make I OLED, current through the OLED independent of the VT is not a function of VT at all. It is not a function of VTT, right? So we are able to find out, see, we have to improve at the device level, but whatever we have, we know that we have somewhere compromised with respect to the cost. We need to deal with this one. So we, so the circuit design engineer, the target is basically, let's say, even if the whole voltage of driving TFT is changing, is there a way to make the OLED current independent of VT? Because VT, you know, the current through a transistor in saturation region is, mu and cox w by l vgs minus vt whole square can you think of making current independent of vt at the circuit let's circuit level let's say this is the current this is the vgs minus vt whole square this is the current so you can see current is function of vt it from this expression it looks like you know, it is tough but if you can make this vgs adaptive if you can make this vgs adaptive means vdf itself captures vt if VDS all itself capture VT, let's say VGS is some things like alpha times some voltage, alpha times some voltage, 
plus vt and then you are subtracting this vt term then you can find it out these terms are cancelling and you may find it out this oled current relatively independent of the vt so such kind of approaches using voltage program pixel circuitry current program pixel circuitry we try to do it so we are able to address all these challenges at the circuit level but also at the device level people are basically uh, using different different deposition techniques right uh, different different deposition techniques uh, different different uh, annealing techniques uh, uh different different passivation technique in order to make the interface as good as possible so that there is a very less vt shift and there have been certain reports where they have find it out that their vt shift is very very less so this is something i would like to tell you this is a kind of empirical model you would, you can see it here uh, the change in vt over time so you can see this is the stress time from 10 to like 10 to the power 4 seconds and this is the stress voltage which you are applying towards the gate gate uh, gate side gate electrode you can see higher the higher the magnitude of the stress voltage higher is the shift in the vt right so the vt shift, shift is not something it's less it is a significant shift but um uh, the if you can make this vt shift as less as possible your tft is going to be that great uh, as good as really because in that case if you are if you can make delta vt almost equal to zero then you don't have the simple 2t 1c 2t means 1c pixel circuitry will be in fact enough means two transistor one capacitor pixel circuitry which i have really shown you at very first example could be enough but it is not happening that is why uh, when you become a pixel design engineer you basically try to address this delta vt over the time okay i will be telling you all these ideas as well so well in in order to understand the electrical instability you can basically so for example we have done a small experimentation in cs csir series planning we basically fabricated a misc metal insulator semiconductor capacitor structure somewhere it looks like somewhere here i am just showing you in order to just tell you the sizes of different different rods i am basically telling you so these are basically underlying this the misc 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 once you do the experimentation you can find it out there is a significant amount of the hysteresis present if you basically have the adaptive spice level 3 model you can check how the tft characteristic look like so you can see the tft which is supposed to be enhancement mode here enhancement mode here once you basically go back you can see this is behaving like a depletion mode right you can see it is it is having off current very less in enhanced mode mode means uh, during the forward sweep you can see its off current is very very less while in the uh, reverse mode you can see the off current is very very high so this is not really good it's not really ideal the interface need to be really optimized some of the experimental work reported by some other people you can see they are also getting some sort of hysteresis in id vg curve okay and uh, if you want to find it out the region of this um, counter clockwise hysteresis you can easily find it out from uh, modeling the interface state density is like you can model based upon the energy dependent and energy dependent uh, acceptor like and donor like stress donor like traps present at the interface you can model it you can find it out there are certain amount of positive charges which are voltage dependent positive charges are coming at the interfaces and interface so what happen if you are applying positive gate voltage they will be pushed if you are applying a positive voltage they will be pushed away from the interface but once you apply a negative voltage means you are swapping back while they will be pulled back right so that is the nature okay but again the magnitude of the qrt itself depend upon the voltages so you will find out some distortion in your cv characteristic and everything however this particular work if you particularly read they find it out uh, with the ta incorporation in l8203 gate dielectric they were able to control this hysteresis and the shift so all these are the device level solution i am not going there well i will summarize the challenges and uh, that challenges has been first uh, when you talk about a oxide thin film transistor any thin film transistor since you are targeting cheaper electronics you are talking about cheaper substrate maybe glass plastic so you need to ensure that whatever deposition you do you carry out at the room temperature that is the first thing second thing all kind most of the time early generation of the tft they were having a threshold voltage of the order of 10 to 20 volt so definitely the vdd required will be very very high so the uh, in fact early stage general tfts which have been demonstrated by the rl hopman and others you can find it out their uh, vt was very high if the vt is very high then vdd requirement will be more and these devices may be the power hungry okay so what you and but the solution seems to be very simple instead of using a conventional silicon nitride or sio2 is get dielectric you can go with the high key get get dielectric they will basically bring down the threshold voltage the second thing i will be telling you somewhere here this way 
The second thing is basically how to define the threshold voltage and accumulation uh, mode TFT. That is a major challenge. Uh, I will be telling you why basically we call it like why uh, we are really interested in accumulation mode and what do you mean by it. Okay, similarly, you need the mobility model uh, at different different stages because there is a thermodynamic emission happening across the grain boundaries. There is basically drift and diffusion. Drift, there is also diffusion du during the substitute conduction and everything. More importantly, is basically once you model everything, it's not basically you are you have you have made a device, you have uh, made this model and everything, but you are not using it. You basically try to adapt certain spice model or try to devise some spice model so that you can do you can go in the area of device to circuit integrated design. Okay, it's basically very important that whatever the devices you are making, if you can make a way to integrate it with the circuit means you are making a device you are integrating with the circuit for example you can do it either using the spice you can also use using verilog a okay so these are the ways you can basically integrate it um, device to circuit integration you can enable it and that will basically you will be able to also look from the circuit design perspective how to basically enhance the performance okay and the other thing is basically all kind of tfts be it any kind of tft amorphous silicon polysilicon organic oxide all suffers from the threshold voltage instability so you need to basically put, put the proper tension if you are doing it fabrication you need to make sure that interface is very good well passivated and defects are as less as possible so that uh, the shift is very less in terms of if you are making a circuit you need to address that whatever is the shift you are able to ch check it what is the shift and uh, means you are making it adaptable so you are sensing the shift and then you are making sure that uh, the i oled is basically independent of the voltage so is that clear so far Is that clear so far? Yes, sir. Uh, can we take a, a two minute break and then I will proceed? Sure, sir. Sure. Okay. okay. Participants, so we'll have a three to five minutes break, then we'll resume the session. Uh, in time, in the meantime, if you have any query, uh, please write it in the chat box or you can. Uh, Keep it for the uh, latest uh, end of the session. Also, you can directly ask to the speaker. So please wait uh, for five minutes.
so meanwhile if anyone has any doubts they can ask so there is how do we characterize traps i will tell you i will tell you so it will come just wait um see uh, someone is asking kindly sir some references for semiconductor material study in general papers mostly encounter non familiar terms it is true that uh, it happens uh, when i was doing uh, starting with the disordered semiconductor i could find out really literature but i would tell you in such cases you should not really go with start with the latest research paper you should go back to the the very old research paper for example when i started with the polycrystalline material i i went with the ceto paper which is i somewhere written in 1980s so it helps so these these papers are basically totally relating with what you have learned with the single crystal silicon and everything uh, right most of the time you will find out the books basically they do cover the uh, the familiar like familiar part but you if you want to be specific then there are certain books have already been available in the polycrystal materials or amorphous silicon materials but i would say you go for the general paper if you are starting with the, some topic you start with the classical paper then go to the your research background right the uh, main papers right so that will basically tell you what are the different different terms does mean okay okay so vangi yes i will be telling you when you are talking about the pdms we will substrate and everything uh, sometimes we do use some rigid island we call it before we make the tft or the olet basically uh, definitely when you are basically doing the uh, something like making on a thin film transfer on a flexible substrate then what will happen is the mechanical strain itself will change its mobility it can change its threshold voltage okay again these things happens if this uh, happens then uh, uh mostly uh, in the device you can think of putting some rigid island or something otherwise uh in design i will be telling you what we can do i will be telling you okay okay how to basically compensate if there is a vt slip how to compensate and other thing if there is mobility change how to compensate if there is change in substrate slope how to compensate ananya okay so so let me start again uh, can i start it now yes sir yes okay So well, let me coming with some conventional model. This is one of the model being proposed by the Hussain. I am telling the putting the author's name here. Okay. So the model is very very similar to what you learn from the CETO paper, J W CETO. I think the author is J W CETO. Somewhere in 1980s he proposed. So he basically tells that if there is polycrystalline material, you can visualize a polycrystalline material as something. You have a grain. You have a grain boundary. You have a grain. then again you have a grain boundaries like this is structure and when you basically let's say the material is supposed to be silicon or anything you have technically you supposed to have ec and ev here right but at the grain you will find it out the electrons will be basically uh, uh, the grain basically acts like a sink for the electron let's say they are accepting the electrons if they are accepting the electrons then means the nearby area they are depleting if they are depleting the nearby area hence there will be some potential barriers like this okay so you can always model it like this and then across this potential barrier you know that once you have a potential barrier kind of problem there could be two kind of uh, transfer mechanism possible one is one could be tunneling another will be de thermodynamic emission so mostly you will find it out that depletion width is really wide so the tunneling doesn't uh, become a uh, more likely possibility it is the thermodynamic uh, based model what the hussein has proposed what the ceto has proposed okay so this is the model and across this grain boundary how the current will basically go it will basically follow the thermodynamic base model so this is basically hussein model it doesn't give any kind of transport um, transport model but it tells uh, tells technically how the transport will take place but it doesn't tell how what will be the final ib characteristic and other thing but it tells you about the surface potential and other things hussein's model coming to mtr model mtr model is the mostly used it is the multiple trapping and release model multiple trapping and release and release it is the simplest of the concept if you might see the single crystal silicon what we assume if you have ec and ev we assume that density of states do present somewhere here right 
here the electrons stay here the electron stays this is the dos and this is the forbidden forbidden band gap that you don't have any electrons staying inside here so what we assume is basically if the material is polycrystalline silicon or amorphous silicon technically the traps are throw out in the band gap of the semiconductor you will find out there will be throw out the traps in the band gap of the semiconductor and uh, these traps will be uh, like you can see let's say here from here to here you can see uh, you need a very less energy so once you have the room temperature these electrons can go here they can basically uh, go from here to here and then can go here so this is a trapping and release kind of model so basically they model all these traps not physically but they model all this behavior within the band gap okay and the best model which is basically you will find it out the results which are very close to experimental results once you basically calculate vt currents and everything it has been the double exponential model okay so you can see the, there are two kind of traps they have uh, defined one is deep stage another is state stage and deep stage has its characteristic time uh, characteristic temperature kb times t okay t deep um, and antel is having uh, some uh, kb times t tel at ec they are maximum and to us if you go to the band gap e minus ec will become negative and these values will will basically decay so this is the mtr model which has been mostly used once you basically define you would like to try to define the threshold voltage and uh, you would like to try to define their uh, other transport parameters so these are the fundamental models which has been defined now just taking from the hussein model if you hussein model what it says basically you are basically looking at the thermodynamic transport across this grain boundary i can assume uh, i can assume my channel uh, let's say i have this uh, uh, this is the substrate let's say glass this is the gate dielectric okay and here i have a jordano channel okay jordano channel i can assume that uh, this is the thickness this is the thickness of the channel t of jordano if i assume this to be the thickness of the channel layer i can have multiple grain boundaries though you may say that this doesn't looks so practical because practical grain boundary was like this right but you can always provide a correction factor at very last uh, maybe empirical factor at the at very last but but this um, putting them in this particular fashion will really help you in order to find it out on average size of you can put the average this is the average size of the grain and here this is the average size of the grain boundary okay then you have a grain then you have a grain boundary along the thickness you will have these things okay along the thickness and along the channel between source and train if you do it so you know that the complete mobility is nothing but a harmonic mean of the mobility which is present here and uh, and here this is gb and mu here right if you solve it and use the thermodynamic transfer model across the grain boundary you will end up getting this particular one okay you will end up getting this one that uh, from the perpendicular uh, so you can see the across this uh, uh, if you are traveling from here to here means your your electrons are going from source to drain this is the mobility you will get uh, this is the mobility of the grain plus one upon mobility of the grain boundary mu gb right this is the mobility of the grain boundary right you can see this is, has been derived from the same formula which has been discussed here so i'm not going in derivatives i'm just telling you some general term uh, so technically this grain is high this grain boundary is less so technically this is the term which dominates and but what happen is basically when you basically when you apply more vgs minus vt more uh, vertical field you know that there, there is another limitation which comes that is basically comes from the scattering the scattering uh, due to this vertical field and again you know that the mobility degree surface mobility degrees due to the application of vgs minus vt which is well established fact fact from the mosfet theory so technically if someone ask uh, someone i ask you to find out the effective mobility you can find it out like this so I'll just a illustration purpose here you can see for the lower lower gate to source voltage lower gate to source voltage the the, regi the regime is basically thermodynamic emission dominated means the mu jo gb dominates here and the higher regime you can see once the barriers are suppressed you can see it's a drift conduction dominated and here you can see this is the mu s equal to something like what is the maximum value you can achieve and then this value will degrade so effective mobility comes somewhere here like this so this is a way of plotting effective mobility versus overdrive voltage which has been done here so you can see all kind of transport being have happening here it is these calculus are made specific for the jordano so valid for any kind of polycrystal material you can basically uh, do it if you are going with the hussein models 
another way of telling it when you to someone ask you thistle voltage before someone ask you thistle voltage i will tell you why do we need a model for the thistle voltage if you might have seen in a conventional mosfet transistor what you have you have a silicon dioxide this is the sio2 right you have the gate you have the gate and if you apply a gate voltage what you if this uh, this substrate is p type silicon uh, uh, what is the point you basically call there is a threshold when the surface becomes equally n type what you have p type here means surface gets inverted right that particular voltage you basically define as a threshold voltage now let me tell you about this zinc oxide based thin film transistor in zinc oxide based thin film transistor let's say again the same voltage i am making the top gate let's say i am making the top gate here this is the source this is the drain let's say this is the jadano layer you have the substrate this is the substrate this jadano layer is thin it looks thick here this is the gate oxide and this is the gate now coming to this particular jadano layer which is the jadano layer here jadano has a very band gap of 3.4 electron volt so it's very quite obvious that thermally generated minority carriers are going to be very less because it is a very wide band gap unlike a silicon so what happens is the thermal generation of the minority carriers is not that possibility here so what happens is basically you don't really go with the inversion mode because you will be needing a very high very high voltage so you may not get this particular part at the conventional voltage voltages so it's better to have jadano is n type semiconductor you basically apply a Uh, apply a voltage like positive voltage so that this n type carriers can be accumulated here and okay so this is basically technically at flat band voltage you know the flat band what happens all the bands are aligned so any voltage greater than flat voltage flat band voltage you will find it out n type channel will be formed here across the source and drain and these devices will be fundamentally non end as accumulation mode but here comes the interesting fact that you may find from a, let's assume the jadano is defect free means is uh, perfectly single crystal and everything you have you have metal here you have dielectric here you can always find out the vfb vfb is nothing but flat band voltage is nothing but the 5 ms right metal semiconductor what concern difference but you know that the jadano um that what happen is basically if you want to conduct the current between source and drain your primary needs the carriers you need the carriers right you need the carriers and what happen is basically due to the grain boundary the carriers get traps as the trapped at the grain boundary the carriers are basically trapped here and the net carrier which are free for the conduction are very very less the n free are is are very very less so you will find it out there is no effective at uh, current between source and drain because the carriers are very less free carriers are very less because most of the carriers are already been trapped when you apply vfb equal to 5 ms so technically you need some additional voltage you need some additional voltage let's say this additional voltage is psi you need this additional voltage in order to surpass this gain grain boundary or in order to release these traps traps uh, these carriers and make them free and so that they can participate in the conduction so what you can do is basically you can estimate this extra voltage and you can add up this with the 5 ms this could be one way so this is the way we what, what we have done here we have basically estimated the extra voltage which you need to apply in order to Uh, make uh, the free carrier density as uh, higher than the normal one, and if you basically do it, you will find it out. This is the express expression you will get. Vt is Vfb plus psi, and where the psi value is basically this one, uh, which is dependent upon various factor, including trap state density, including the oxide capacitance, and including the accumulation layer thickness and everything. Okay, it's uh, visible here. If the grain boundary trap density basically increases, you will find it out with the high carrier dielectric. Let's say this is the silicon dioxide. You can see the the psi, the additional voltage is supposed to be very high. which means if you, which means that if you are making a thin film transistor with the silicon dioxide uh, gate dielectric and ultimately the psi is going to be very high for the sio2 if the grain boundary trap density is high so it means the vt is going to be high however if you are basically using la2o3 or jro2 the which, which are the high k dielectric you will find it out this value of the psi is less uh, at the same value of the grain boundary trap density hence you can rely on lower vt so this is another one model you can uh, you can express we also try to make another analytical model using mtr based model which will be i will be telling you glimpse later on okay now as i said everything you do you basically define the analytical model and everything but primarily one thing is very understandable here is basically when you talk about a jadano tft or a mosfet jadano tft or any kind of tft with the piece polysilicon tft amorphous silicon tft and mosfet 
there, there is nothing to, as a circuit design and point of view everything is same they are ln id versus vg characteristic log id versus vgs is similar to the mosfet they have behavior is basically similar to mosfet only thing is that they are inferior device means let's say the mosfet is having a better mobility they will not be having that good mobility and let us say the mosfet is basically doesn't give you that kind of sysol voltage shift they are more stable but they will be unstable otherwise their behavior is similar if their behavior is similar and already you have uh, existing various spice models for the mosfets available and you know that there are no tfts which you are basically going to use in the display electronics you are not going with the uh, with the uh, 10 nanometer channel length or maybe uh, 28 nanometer channel length you are not going with that small dimension you are going with 1 micrometer 10 micrometer channel length so what you can do is basically you can take any spice model which basically takes all take care of all the region means it defines the saturation region linear region of the sole region definitely i have ignored in terms of 1 plus lambda times vds and other terms will be there but i'm just telling that its behavior is similar to mosfet if this behavior is similar to mosfet then it is very easy to calibrate a spice level 3 model which behaves as if it is a model for the thin film transistor because they have behavior is same just only thing is that you just just go through from the spice manuals you find out out all the 40 parameters i think around 40 parameters you will find it on the spice level 3 you find out what are the major parameters you need to put into consideration so that they are characteristic their behavior of so that you can always calibrate your thin film transistor like experimental characteristic of a tft with the behavior of this one now the question is why don't we use the verilog a you can use the verilog a but whenever someone asks you to do the pvt process voltage temperature analysis and everything you will not be able to do because or you will be needing a different different verilog a file for the same you cannot do other alteration once you have the very low gain model available so it is convenient to use the spice model because you know that they are geno is also semiconductor so it's most of the property will be also with the uh, go, goes along with the as as if uh, normal semiconductor the only thing is that its mobility is less its um, thresholds voltage may be high it will have a thresholds voltage shift and everything its thresholds slope is inferior so all these things will be there so just take care of all these things so this is a general process of how you adapt the spice level model you start with the device physics of jadano based tft and mosfet you have, should have a crisp idea because those spice level 3 is a empirical model but it is also a physical model it's not like all the it is all the empirical it's a basically physical plus empirical model you should be having the experimental characteristic of some oxide tfts as much as possible so that you can finally calibrate based upon all this information you need to set up the spice level 3 model parameter after you set up set it up you compare with the validation with the experimental result if the validation is successful you do it with again different different sets of the experimental data set and you can basically have the spice level 3 model ready otherwise you have to reexamine the extracted performance parameter of spice and then you have to again go back so you can always make the model so i will give you some some of the things if you really go with the level 3 model these are the basically some key parameter like tox vto nfs is basically fast uh, surface density and it is used to model the substitution slope and it is almost nfs is almost q times dit q times dit dit is the interface uh, energetic distribution of the interface states okay rds is the channel resistance you can have rd and rs is the contact resistance theta is the factor which basically tells you uh, the surface mobility degradation there is basically field bulk mobility there is also eot i, I don't know that tox is basically covered by the equivalent oxide thickness because it's pretty obvious since you are not starting with the you, silicon you are starting with the zeno it's not necessary to have sio2 as a gate dielectric you have you can have different different gate dielectric but spice only have a parameter tox so instead of putting tox directly there you can also put the equivalent oxide thickness so it will give you more realistic scenario I'm just telling you some of the some of the these things you can see these are some experimental results on jeno tft and this reds are simulated one which are which basically are, are within plus minus 3% errors okay you can see there are different different characteristic you can do the calibration once this is again calibrated not only this idvz characteristic but also their idvds characteristics are also calibrated i'm not showing it here but once once you have calibrated now you have a spice model available now you can think of making different different circuitry maybe the display circuitry maybe the in pixel image circuitry using the zeno tft more importantly one more thing is basically uh, now before i really 
uh, and this particular discussion i will go with some of our recent work which we have done um, uh, uh, for the um, for the thin film transistors one work is basically related to the uh, uh, studying uh, of the purpose of this uh, uh, particular experiment was bst as as we were seeing from the group can give you a very high dielectric constant if the k is very high what will happen the vt can be bring down so you can think of having a low vt transistor so what we did is basically we tried to make a mis structure after making this mis structure we, we did a cv you can see there is a good amount of hysteresis which is coming as a um, counter clockwise hysteresis we were getting and um, and there was a considerable amount of the shift as well bst you know there will be a peak uh, peak dielectric constant at certain particular point it happens it's a property of the bst so cv is doesn't looks very conventional but you can see um, even if you have pt bst pat stack you will find it out this dielectric constant will be function of the electric field okay so based upon that if someone basically wants to make this tft you can find out what will be the extracted characteristic using this pulse okay so we try to study this bst uh, that interface between general bst we did not uh, only the annealing treatment was done no other treatment was done but again the challenge is basically to control this hysteresis again uh, i would say uh, the another motivation you can see clearly there is a big challenge is vt shift or an instability so once you basically become a pixel circuit design engineer and you have models adapted models everything not only the spice level 3 i would say if you have the hs spice available in your institute you can uh, you can think of level 61 and 62 these are the uh, amorphous silicon and i think polycrystal silicon based model of tft already they been there so let's say uh, these are the tft models actually but these are the license means uh, you cannot run these models in lt spice or cadence because these are the license by the hs spice so you can adapt these models and um, uh, for the jadano based tft for the organic tft everything and you can basically work it again you can mean the entire circuits for example this is one of the circuits here basically we were we have designed a uh, voltage program vts compensating pixel circuit for am oled display so the fundamental idea here was basically somehow you try to capture you make a diode connected transistor means uh, if it is a diode connected transistor let's say this is a capacitance here okay and let's say this particular voltage is basically charged to a voltage vp right now now you are turning on this particular tft you are turning on this tft through different different data lines list there is v for there are different different voltages can you see it's a voltage program that is why we call it you can make always some combination of v1 v2 v3 such that in in a uh, threshold voltage compensation phase there will be different different phase there will be threshold voltage compensation phase there will be data input phase there will be illumination phase different different phases you will be having emission phase i would say okay in emission phase the role is basically in emission phase emission phase you need to ensure that i oled is not a function of oled is not a function of uh, vt it should not be a function of vt this is the goal so let's i give you a scenario let's say you have a diode connected transistor just think as a transistor and it is charged to a vp and vp voltage is greater than vt now if you are turning on this particular tft what will happen how long this uh, capacitor can discharge if this is having a value vp how long it can discharge anyone this tft will be on unless the vgs is greater than vt yes or no this tft diode connected tft will be on unless the vgs gate to source voltage is greater than vt yes or no again if the problem is not clear i can redraw it look at here i'm giving you a scenario let's say this is the capacitance you have and this is the vp is the voltage across this particular capacitance and this transistor is on and uh, forget about what you have here forget about what you have here let's say if this transistor is on uh, my question is how long this particular vp can discharge means this vp voltage can discharge up to what value i can say that this is the gate terminal this is source terminal this particular transistor t will be on for vgs greater than vt yes or no yes or no this particular transistor will be turned on for vgs greater than vt correct someone yes sir yes so sir. so you can clearly see yes, this particular, right so what we are doing is basically this particular vp voltage is basically discharging up to a value vt up to a value vt so at the end of this compensation phase what you will get here this vp value will be discharged up to vt correct and hence you have captured the vt voltage at this gate to source voltage 
if you have if you have made the vgs as a function of vt if you have made the vgs as a function of vt what will happen when you will compute the current current is vgs minus vt whole square and the vgs itself is a function of vt so vt and vt will cancel out and you will find out their oled current is basically independent of vgs so that is what we call it the voltage program scheme and the major contributor to voltage program scheme is the diode connection okay you can always have the diode connection here for example here t5 is the uh, driving tft this is a driver others are basically switching and switching tfts so once this t4 is on this behave as a diode connection once the t4 is on this behave as a diode connection and you can think of this setting up this vc2 value in such a way that it is coming as a function of function of vt and once you have once you make sure that it is coming as a function of vt and you do the vgs minus vt whole square during the emission phase you will find it out the current is basically independent of the vt so that is basically fundamental approach when you basically do it right so you can see clearly if i look at here in uh, this is my emission phase uh, this particular phase is basically emission phase in emission phase you can see for different different vts value if i th i hope the screen is visible you can see the font for different different vts value you can see at the during the emission phase which happens from 4 micro uh, second to 5 micro second vgs minus vt is independent of vt change can you see finally vgs minus vt is independent of vt so it's a constant it's a constant so current here will be constant square so current will be independent of vgs minus vts so you can see with the with respect to stress voltage what will be the uh, percentage change okay in the oled it is very reasonable value very less value technically somewhat also we did i told you already we proposed one hussein model based uh, uh, sole voltage approximation model also we did for the mtr based sole voltage model for approximation model is there any question so mtr is multiple trapping and release model so i for the basics of this particular model is using this double density of uh, double uh, trap uh, double uh, density of stress model uh, which has deep stress and tail state so you can see uh, we are defining here to band diagram in the flat band in the weak accumulation in the strong accumulation the strong accumulation is somewhere we desire somewhere the point where the carrier density can you see this graph is a carrier density you will say that your tft is turned on when the carrier density increases exponentially right so that particular point that is the pin surface potential we call it that particular surface potential you will find it out how the carrier density is increasing exponentially so you can define at this particular surface voltage the desired value of the vgs will be defined as the vt so that we have done expression is not written here just to just for understanding i have shown it here once the carrier density increases you you can basically tell the free carriers have increased so this is the point you can define the vt another one is basically we uh, we basically are working with the flexible display this is the recent work we have communicated not published yet so here basically you can see this is a top emissive uh, am oled pixel so this is basically you have a thin pin transistor array this is the oled and this is the electrode top electrode means how it does it really looks like right so here basically we use the flexible substrate okay the flexible substrate what happens someone has asked basically when you make it in a pdms substrate or something is flexible so definitely tft performance parameter will become a function of function of strain what are those parameters you can see with the strain vt can change with the strain the mobility can change so these are the uh, fundamental parameter which can change but already since you are designing the circuit which can compensate for vt compensation to vt is also means the compensate indirectly also means compensation to mobility because mobility changes also basically gives you i oled change right so you if you can work it out and you can see for example the substrate here is a flexible substrate you can have the rigid island before you basically makes all these things so you can see with the compressive strain and tensile strain you can have uh, oled compensation of very good compensation because the delta i oled is very less and this is the proposed pixel circuit layout so all these things what i'm just trying to say that once you have made the TF, you are working with the tft technically you can easily go to the area of the display electronics which is one of the very emerging area uh, if uh, uh, electronic gadget market is really considered the emsd sector is uh, really considered right and this this is not simply a part been this is something like which has been very discussed very rarely in the universities because still we are working with the vlsi and other thing but we hardly basically the curriculum involves the display electronics but i would say that if you are enhancing your skill because 
every basics is same it means if you are working the circuit level you have to again do the rajavi and other thing if you are working with the device level you should know the proper functioning of um, uh, so you should be uh, have very clear cut having uh, you should be having clear cut understanding with the more for silicon polyester silicon and all kind of you know how the transport will take place and everything and once it is done once you have made the basic uh, understanding and you are able to make the models which can be directly integrated with the cad based software bit cadence with the hspice you can always think of basically making uh, circuitry there is lots of the experimental data valid experimental data which is available in the society for information display, display the journal of information display and different different um, journals where which you can follow it up you can calibrate your model after calibration you can think of designing addressing this problem means stand dep dependency on the thistle voltage and change in thistle voltage then how you address the change in thistle voltage you can devise the topology okay so all these things you can do and it basically adds a different dimension to your research Okay, so uh, uh, now I am almost towards the end of the uh, talk. So I would like to acknowledge all my research collaborator, which happens in from the Bits Pilani, uh, Professor Nonit Gupta, uh, Chandrasekhar Sir, uh, ex director of Sri Pilani, uh, Dr. Jitendra Singh. With him, I did a lot of experimental work. Dr. Rupam Goswami. With him, I had lots of discussion regarding device circuit code design and other things. Also, my all the UG students who are actively working, be it from Bits Pilani, be it from the Tripoli Alhaba. Also, my PG students, um, PhD students who are working now, the, they are working, they are doing the constant attempt, and they are trying to. They are either working in the circuit level or the device wave level, and they're making constant attempts to excel in the area of the display electronics. And finally, all the lab staff of Tripoli, all the colleagues for providing a very constructive environment at Tripoli Alhaba, and the organizer of the FDP. For giving me the platform to share my expertise, right? So, thank you. So, I would uh, really um, go back to the moderator. So, for any questions, thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful presentation and really uh, enlightened, uh, which gives the enlight to the participants about the TFT and the display technology and recent day uh, opportunity of the research field also. And I hope all the participants uh, get benefited from this lecture. And uh, I thank sincere uh, thank to Dr. Kavindra. And uh, and now I like to uh, take the question from the participants. If you have any question, you can directly unmute yourself, and you can ask uh, our respected speaker. And or else you can also write in the chat box. Any questions, participants? You can directly ask, or you can write in the chat box also. So I would like to ask a very basic question, uh, just for my kind understanding purpose. Thanks, sir. Uh, how the traps are being generated, and how we will, uh, how we can control it. Hmm. Um, yes, uh, no, wonderful question. Uh, let me begin. I will share my whiteboard if I can. Yeah. So here the idea, like almost, I would say, uh, when we are talking about the thin film transistors, this wait. Yeah, when we are talking about thin film transistor we are dealing with the disordered semiconductor this is the very first thing means we are dealing with either amorphous semiconductor or polycrystalline semiconductor right as i said let's say you discuss about all these things for example i would make this is um uh, let me make this is the substrate uh, i should choose a different pan actually yeah My screen is visible, right? Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, yes. So let's say this is the this is the Jadano channel, okay? Or any oxide, any semiconductor which is amorphous or polycrystalline in nature. As I said, I have shown you the same same image as well. So you can see there is a green boundaries. There are the green boundaries, right? And there is also a gate dielectric here. This is the gate dielectric, right? This is the gate dielectric. 
So uh, one thing we already know, whenever we basically realize this interface, you will always find it out that at the interface, always there is some interface state density. In fact, even in the MOSFET, the order is almost 10 to power 10, right? When you are making the MOSFET with the silicon and silicon dioxide, the order is 10 to power 10 centimeter square per whole second. So that much, uh, sorry, you can see the energetic unit, you can put it here. So almost 10 to power 10. Uh, centimeter per centimeter per cubic centimeter, you will find out these steps are present because of the dangling bonds and other, other thing. But when you talk about some novel interface, means your gate dielectric is new, your channel material is new, definitely there will be possibility of the interface traps, right? It could be acceptor like traps, means their nature will be like they will be expecting the, 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 the means if it is acceptor like traps, then what will happen? They will trap one electron. If they trap one electron, what will happen? Nearby semiconductor, there will be depletion. There will be depletion and the, there will be band bending like this, right? The nature could be the donor like straps, means they are giving the electrons. So, nearby nearby semiconductor, what will happen at the interface? They will be basically accumulating the electrons here, right? So, their nature could be voltage dependent. This is this is one kind of traps which we call as a QID. But most importantly, we also have the, some traps which is coming from the structure itself. For example, if it's a polycrystal silicon, then you know that these are the green boundary. Green boundary basically are trapping centers, right? So means if there are the electrons here, there are the electrons here. So the, what they will be doing, they will be basically trapping these electrons and hence there will be a kind of potential barrier, right? So everything is happening on these interfaces only. This And these trap centers are also dependent upon the uh, the voltage. For example, if you apply higher value of the vertical voltage, which is your VGS voltage, then definitely this uh, height, this potential barrier height will decrease and hence uh, the trapping will be less, more. So all these things are again coming as a voltage dependent. So all these things contribute to trap, be it uh, defects within present, within the gate dielectrics, defects which are present at the interface between gate dielectrics and uh, semiconductor. Also, the semiconductor itself, which is basically mostly the polycrystalline nature where they are the green boundaries and they basically introduce the traps. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Uh, I got some of the points. And uh, one question I would like to ask, that is also a very basic question. When we are going to design uh, defect, uh, you told that it can be of oxide or organic material based defects. So, whenever we are plotting its characteristics, uh, we are uh, uh, going to understand its physics. We generally deal with uh, conventional uh, uh, effects uh, uh, physics. So, why is that uh, occurring? Just because of the similar characteristic or there is something different phenomenal difference? See, see uh, if, you are, uh, if you are really going at device level, Right? We know that, uh, let's say if the channel is a polycrystalline, then there is a barrier. If there is a barrier, you know that across the barrier, uh, you will have a transport mechanism like thermoanimic and uh, or maybe tunneling across the barrier. So when we are going in deep in device physics, we can always formulate our problem statement either as a, as a physical model, means you define the green boundaries and put a function where you have the random orientation of the green boundary, some correction function, and you basically have to deal with the thermodynamic emission and other theory, which will be entirely different from what you do in the MOSFET. But when it comes to the behavior, when it comes to behavior, if you uh, make a TFT and the TFT the interface is sound, then if you plot its characteristic, you will find it out their characteristic IDVG and every characteristic is basically similar to the what we have in the MOSFET. So here the idea comes is basically if the characteristic are similar to MOSFET, then why don't uh, let us make a behavioral model. If you are basically making a spice, uh, you are uh, uh, taking the spice model, the spice models are basically could be the physical model for the MOSFET because they are uh, defined for the MOSFET, but they are the behavioral model for the TFT. They will basically define the behavior that since their behavior is similar to the, the, their behavior, like we do it in the very low gate, where we basically start with the lookup tables and we basically um, we have the lookup table of some experimental work and we introduce it into design so that we can see its performance in the design. Similarly, if we basically uh, think that uh, uh, its behavior of TFT and MOSFET, they are similar, then I can always adapt any SPICE model for the TFT. But the model which will, uh, which this model will be the purely behavioral. It is not with the physical model. For physical model, again, you have to rework all the calculations. There are lots of models available. Like, as I said, amorphous silicon and spice level 61, 62, they are defined and they are they consider all the grain boundary trap states, everything they consider. And this is the spice level, H spice level 61, 62, they are the physical model. 
also the spice model but again the problem is that for that you need the access spice uh, if you want to use it otherwise there there are the spice models which you can adapt is it clear yeah okay sir thank you uh, one more basic question i would like to ask because your topic is uh, quite matching with mine and i am doing the digital uh, device fabrication kind of work so during the device fabrication i, I came to know that when we uh, uh, deposit the these material oxide material over the uh, flexible substrate then up to certain uh, uh, thickness there are some kind of cracks uh, in, in in this oxide layer deposit so how to avoid how you have avoided these things and up to what height you, uh, what what thickness you have deposited things for physical device fabrication process um Uh, sir actually uh, uh, in terms of the fabrication uh, we have gone up to the glass substrate we have never deposited in the flexible the flexible what we do is basically in terms of flexible substrate we have taken the reported data and the reported data we basically uh, adapted the, the corresponding spice model so the complexity means it's very natural that when you are basically sub depositing in the pdms you can have uh, lots of traps and definitely the uh, uh, there could be some problem like uh, as you are mentioning there could be some cracks or something but uh, i think uh, what i have read from the literature people are using some result island in order to basically uh, make sure that there are there, there is less strength in the underlying tft structure they use the result island but uh, i am not very much sure about this particular question okay thank you so much sir for very 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 informative and uh, uh, knowledgeable session uh, your uh, presentation was very good very informative i i i am seeing in the uh, feedback uh, also from audience side it's uh, highly praiseable so thank you uh, to you from the organizers side for uh, covering a good session with uh, fruitful topics thank you so much sir thank you very much sir thank you any other questions so if there is a no question from audience side then uh, let's let's thanks again to our respected speaker and we will take a break we will meet again at 2 pm for our hands on session thank you participants uh thank you organizers for giving me this opportunity thank you very much thank you and participants please submit the feedback form before leaving the meeting uh feedback form is there in your chat box section uh, please do fill the feedback form